Hey everybody, welcome. This is Two EdTech Guys Take Questions and Share Cool Stuff. And I am so excited that you have joined us for our episode one of what is sure to be great fun on a weekly basis until we decide not to. So there you go. So, so there are some thanks that we need to pass out because I think it's important in life to pass out thanks. If you disagree, we are totally cut from the wrong, same different wood, I should say. Uh, and first, Richard, Richard from Free Tech for Teachers. Uh, his blog is one that if you don't know about, man, are you missing? Uh, feel free to give that a look. Uh, we'll talk more about that as we go. Uh, good folks at ISTE, uh, they have the ISTE Commons going. There's loads of good information that gets shared there. I also want to send a shout out to all the FETC people and Jen Womble in particular, who is, a, who is one of the great uh, get things done ladies of our, of, of our age. So I don't mean like our age, but like our, our time, our epic, if you know what I mean. I think she's younger than I am, just saying, all right? And if you are from Fowler joining us, uh, so all of us who are, are kind of working on the Wednesday webinars, you know, like with uh, Susan Stewart of Fowler USD, join in, very cool to have you. It is, it is great to meet you. I hope you are kind of ready on Friday following this week uh, for a little, a little fun but useful sharing that, uh, that we're gonna do. We're gonna take your questions and we might even give you good answers. We promise we'll try, we just can't confirm that they will be excellent, but we'll try, you be the judge. So, a little bit about Richard. Richard, introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Richard. I have two toddlers, as you can see, and they are super excited that dad is home all the time now. Uh, so, on a professional note, I teach high school computer science in Maine, Oxford Hills Technical School. Prior to that, I spent eight years on the road doing professional development events all over the world. And before that, I taught high school social studies for 10 years. And before that, I was a corporate trainer at FedEx for a few years. So that's my background. And one day back in 2007, I decided to start a blog and Turns out people liked what I wrote, so I kept writing. And 15,000 blog posts later, here I am answering your questions. It's fun. I'm still having fun doing it most of the time. Every once in a while, I get a little overwhelmed. I told Russian I have about 10,476 questions from readers in my inbox right now. So that's a little overwhelming. But other than that, I really have fun with it. So thanks for being here. My name is Rushton, and this, this, is, this is Tabitha, the, the babe who agreed to spend her life with me. How lucky am I? Uh, and, uh, and I married up, as it turns out. Uh, we have no children, but we have cats, and that actually works really well for us in the Just Saying department. This picture was taken uh, last year on a cruise when cruises seemed like a good idea. That, that, uh, that thought has passed a little bit, you know, just recently, but you know, now we're kind of in this space right here. I think this, this better describes the world we live in at, at the moment. And so... Our kudos to uh, whoever it is that, uh, that, 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 that altered the great work to uh, reflect our time in, in, in a profound, profound manner. So I started a little shindig in 2005 called Next Vista for Learning. What is that you say? I'm glad you asked. What it is, is an online library of videos by and for teachers and students everywhere, free to use, free to contribute to, free to download from, all for a student audience, all screen content. It's my little attempt to save the universe from ignorance, one creative video at a time. All right, so uh, loads of, of cool videos that have been created and shared by students and teachers around the world. And we would love to like highlight stuff your students do. You're like, I'd love to have them do a video project while they're at home during online learning. Oh, let's talk. Let's make this happen. All right, happy to help. So we have videos on, on uh, academic stuff and on communities and on service. We have a big collection of careers videos, over 600 videos in our English language project uh, effort. And so any of those where you're like, oh, my God, talk, talk to me. Tell me more. Let me know. Let me just stay in touch. We will tell you how to stay in touch with us by the time we finish this, this thing. The idea, of course, is we keep the learning going. Uh, there have been districts out there who have said, oh, no, 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 no. For equity, what we're going to do is we're just going to stop instruction altogether. Teachers do not continue your curriculum. I disagree with that approach. I quite think that, uh, that, you know, in terms of equity, you might be creating an equitable situation for the kids in your district, but what about the next district over? Are your kids in an equitable position compared to the kids in a, in a school or a district where they are doing the hard work figuring out how to keep things going. Now I know it's more complex than that, but, but by all means, your kids need you, right? This is a time when, when your students need to know that you're there, you care for them, you know that they've got bright futures if they, if they push themselves. So keeping the learning going is a big whopping deal. Now, how's this gonna work? So we're gonna start by having uh, Richard spend uh, just a couple of moments sharing about a, a cool 
a cool thing that's out there. I'm going to do a couple of shares, then we're just going to take questions. So that's how this is going to work. Richard, you're on. All right. I'm excited about this one. It's called Anchor.fm. And if you've listened to my podcast, which is mostly 20 minutes of me rambling and answering questions, uh, I use Anchor FM to publish my podcast because it does all the hard work of distributing to iTunes and Google Play and Spotify and all that stuff. It does that all for you with one click. That's, cool, that's kind of cool. The thing that's really cool that's new this week, and I just wrote about it this morning, is you can now, from your phone, invite up to four other people to record a podcast remotely with you. So you don't have to be in the same place. You don't have to give that, you don't have to get everybody on a Zoom or anything like that. Just send them a link from your phone. If you can send a text message, you're qualified to make a podcast with Anchor. That's the thing I really like about it. Uh, you know, I, I did a, a webinar on podcasting about a month ago. And of course, about a month ago, all the schools started shut down. So everyone who was like, oh, I wanted to start this. Well, now you still have an option. So I'm really excited about, about Anchor's latest feature. Um, it's owned by Spotify, by the way. It started out as an independent and it's now owned by Spotify. So uh, neat, neat, neat tool. Very cool. So for me, there, there are three things I want to toss your way. Uh, two, two of them are resources very specific, or as I see it, very specific to, uh, to, to our current situation and, and all of which apply. But So the first is on the left there, Monica's Tips for Online Instruction. Monica Martinez uh, is this amazing teacher from, from Texas who has created a, a single page PDF with 10 tips for online instruction. And it's focused on people who are, are newly online instructors, right? Who are like, wait, I never thought I'd do this. And then, then the world turned over, right? And so you'll, you'll find those really well described and just like well, all of her material really well designed, she's got a particular eye for doing things well. Uh, in the middle uh, there, you'll see Eric Kurtz. And by the way, Eric, part of the, part of the group right now, way to go, Eric. Um, he, has, he has this talent for creating tutorials that are very, very concisely described, cleverly put together. He's, he's, he's got one of those voices that just makes you go, ah, things are gonna be okay, right? So, uh, so make sure you take a look at, at Eric's stuff on this. He's got a set that are all about uh, Google Classroom, and he's got another set that are all about Google Meet, right? And so if you're trying to figure out Google Meet, you're like, ah, Google Meet, all right. He's got some great videos to help you go on on that. The third one over there is SpeakPipe Voice Recorder. Now, those of you who teach elementary, who were like looking away like, oh no, this guy is too energetic. Now's the time to look back because SpeakPipe Voice Recorder is a tool that requires no account, no payment, nothing. You never even need to put your name in it. Ask you at one point for your name and it's optional. You don't have to do it. What are you talking about? What is this thing? Well, SpeakPipe is, and, and let, me, let me kind of give you a show right here. So the, the beautiful thing about SpeakPipe Voice Recorder is that it is ridiculously simple. Right. As you look at the page, there's like it says sign in. You said there was no account. You don't have to have an account. Ah, whew, good. So this green button in the middle, start recording. You can guess what that does, right? So you click it, you speak. The first time, of course, it'll be like allowed to use the microphone. That's totally fine. Right. And and then you speak and then you stop. And then what it does is it it processes that and it'll say, you know, okay, do you want to, you know, uh, do you want to redo it or do you want to save? You know, and if you save, it'll give you a link. Now that link will take you to what you recorded and it'll be on uh, online for three months, right? They keep it on their servers for three months. Uh, after that, gone. However, that link also takes you, will, like that particular link has a download piece on it. So you can click download and download it as an MP3, which is really, really nice. Now you can only go up to five minutes, but that's a long recording in the just saying department, right? So, you know, if, if you've got a kid who's describing something, Give them, give them a time frame, like 30 seconds or less, so that they get focused on, on what they're putting together. Now, all of these shares that we just gave you, you're going to find right here. And I, I have the, actually, that's the shortcut for it. Uh, I put the, the full link uh, in the chat right now, nextvista.org and slash advice slash continuity slash two guys resources .phtml. So feel free to click on that so that you got that up as well. Uh, and, and, and hopefully you'll find in those things that we shared, things for which you may have questions that we can answer next week. Ah, always thinking. All right, there you go. So let's get you some of your questions. Richard, get us going. 
So I wanted to add to what you were saying about speak, speak pipe because I think it's a cool, I've, I learned about it years ago from Scott McLeod who has it on his blog. So if you put the speak pipe, a widget on your classroom website or classroom blog, kids don't even have to go to speak pipe. They just go to the regular place they always go to, to see updates from your school or from your class, click record and they can start talking back to you. That's a, that's a really cool piece. Now, do you have to, do you have to pay for an account to have that? I no, was, no. Wow. That's nope. awesome. In fact, uh, I believe I still have it up on my old classroom blog, which was mrburnteaches.com. Uh -huh. uh, let me double check. I think I still have it up. Yeah, on if you my old... toss it into the uh, chat and, and we'll, we'll yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll put it in there. But uh, you can't, uh, Pat, uh, Patricia just asked, can you embed speak pipe in Google Classroom? Unfortunately, you can't embed it, but you can put a link to it in there. Exactly. And, and so, so when you think about uh, moving to online instruction, right? Limiting the number of tools, new tools that you add is, is a good idea. But one of the things you want every kid to be able to do is to respond to something you ask them to do with a link, right? So maybe in Google Classroom, you've done an assignment and their job is to give you a link. And if you click on that link and you get what you're supposed to get, they turned it in. If you don't, then they didn't. And you might say, well, that sounds kind of harsh. Initially, of course, people are getting used to it. And, you know, do, do kind of a, a test that doesn't, you know, have a lot of grading stuff with it or anything like that. You know, hey, tell me about how you're doing, how you're feeling, you know, or whatever. Uh, and, and then they give you that link and you play it and it works. So then we know it works. Once we know it works, then, you know, kids aren't doing things like tossing a link in, and, you know, and, and you click on it and it doesn't go anywhere. And you're like, hey, didn't you? And they're like, oh, really? Sorry. I, I, I'm, I'm away at the moment, but I'll go back and I'll get that. What they needed was more time. You know, I mean, that's possible, right? Uh, so, so, so all our children, I'm sure act honorably, but on the other hand, you know, just in case one, one strays, you know, you'll, you'll know how to deal with that. <laughs> Great question from Patricia there. Keep going, Richard. So here's a question uh, that's right in your wheelhouse, Rushton. Bring it. Uh, all right. I teach a filming elective at school name redacted to protect the innocent. Uh, like many school systems, we're all working from home. Normally, students use iMovie, iMax, and Canon camcorders to make films. Now they will have only their city-issued Chromebooks, which have a webcam, but the camera doesn't rotate. I want to pare down a project for students to do a video podcast. Wondered if you know of any web-based video editors or Chrome add-on that allow them to do things like iMovie does. Got it. All right, so if you're looking to put... Um... Uh, and, and by the way, just tossed into the chat the, the question to Robin's question. All right, so you got that link right there. If you're looking to make videos uh, using Chromebooks, uh, you've got some options and, and they're pretty good. Uh, so, so, you know, one of the things you, that you can use, and I think it's kind of the simplest uh, choice, is uh, the extension. Now, of course, people have to know how to get the extension in, into their system. But, but if, you can, if you can do a Google extension, a Chrome extension, Screencastify.com. Screencastify. And, and Richard, if you'd toss that, uh, that link in, that would be cool. Screencastify.com. If you go to that site and you say, add the extension, it'll take you to the Chrome Web Store where you click again, add the extension, and then it'll say it does these things. And you're like, add extension again, or it's okay, or whatever. And then you've got this little guy. And actually, on my screen right now, you'll see it right there. It's the, I said, can, can you do the cool Mac thing with these? Not at all. All right. Um, but uh, what this is, is a thing that I click. And when I click it, it gets set up to be able to do a screencast. I'm not going to do it at the moment because I feel like that would tear the fabric of the universe, given that we're already, uh, you know, doing something along those lines. Um, but you can embed your webcam. Uh, you, can, you can describe something that you've put together. If you've got some slides there, uh, you know, that you're like, hey, you know, you know this, this is what I want you to do and blah, 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 blah. Keep it short. Keep it short important thing. Uh, and then that actually is something you can toss into Google Drive <clears throat> automatically. Um, it's just, it's easy, right? You know, you can click a link and you've got the link. Kids can actually do this. If you're thinking about like, how on earth am I going to do summative assessment online? One of the ways to do it is to say, you know, you have this thing to answer and you have to be able to do it within 45 seconds, right? And so they have to like, you know, click on that, maybe like do the webcam option. And then you see them talking to you and they're like, this is connected to this for this reason, but you always have to be thinking about this. So they're describing what they, what they know in a way that 
you, you know is, is genuine because you can see them. I mean, there's a thousand ways to cheat, of course, in, in any environment, but, but, that, but that's real. Second uh, tool for creating a video would be Adobe Spark and it's free. And you're like, wait, 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 Adobe free can't be true. It is. All right. And so Adobe Spark, I mean, th there's a little watermark, no big deal. Spark.adobe.com. Uh, Richard, help us out on that front as well. Uh, that, that is one where, where it looks like it's a set of slides. Really what these are are components of a video you make. And so you click and, and you say, all right, add. And then it's like a, a clip that you upload from your device or uh, some text or an icon or a photo. And, and you, know, you can upload those or grab from uh, Creative Commons uh, license sources or Unsplash, which are licensed for free use as well. All right, and, and pull those pieces together. On each of these slides, you click a little microphone and hold it and start narrating, all right? And so you say what you need to say. You need to say it in about 10, 11, 12 seconds uh, max. Um, but you, know, you can keep adding things as you go. And then it just automatically creates this video. It's a beautiful thing, right? It's the kind of thing where like the, the clouds part, the sun shines through, and you're like, oh, we got a good video. So great tool. It too allows you to create a, create a link that, that you can share, and, and actually not to YouTube. It's to an Adobe page, a very simplified page with just the video which is kind of nice because as much as I love me YouTube, there are often say distracting elements, right? The related videos or the comments or things like that. So, uh, so you know, that's, that's a cool tool. Now, uh, just like uh, somebody mentioned a little bit earlier in the chat as well, we video. It's probably the most sophisticated video tool out there and, and it's, it's, it's a cool one, right? There are multi-tracks for audio and for video. Audio and video? Certainly video, probably audio, maybe, right? And as you get into it, it, it there's even like green screen options. I mean, there, there are some really, really cool pieces. They've got a lot of things you can draw from. There, there are some distinctions between the free and the, the paid accounts, but they have this thing going right now where if you find your way to the right page, and we'll see if we can, we can snag that for you, uh, you, you can you can let them know that you're part of a school and that that's dealing with this and 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 on I think a case by case basis at least as of a few days ago, you know, they'll they'll help you out on that front. So so three good options all for Chromebooks all web based right. Uh, Screencastify.com so those are screencast videos right requires an extension to to Chrome. Uh, Adobe Spark which is which is one of the simplest cool looking video editor I know. Uh, and we video, which is the, the most full function online video editing tool I know. That was a lot of info. I hope that was useful. Richard, anything you want to add to all that? I'll just add that we videos, uh, one of their, ver one of the versions of we video enables collaboration between students. So okay. that if you have, uh, you know, your kids are trying to work on a group project and obviously they're not going to get together in the same same building for a while you can you can do that uh, that's the thing I'd, I'd like to add about about we video that i actually always forget about until i need it well said uh, you know and and by the way uh some of you may be thinking well what about zoom can you create videos with zoom you're doing this at the moment it's true right and so you can use zoom for that and the free account's fine now the free account, now they've actually kind of lifted a lot of these restrictions, you know, under the current virus crisis, but um, under normal circumstances, and, we're, and we really should be looking at all of the stuff we're doing from the standpoint of, yes, I want to do this stuff for now, but I want to know how this is going to be useful for what I do once the crisis passes. Because, you know, if you look at what you're going through right now and think, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to up my game as a result of this. It's stressful. It is. But, but will you? Yeah. If you're looking for ways to get more creative about your teaching and helping more kids uh, have more avenues for showing what they've learned, all the better. Back to Zoom. So with Zoom, there is a, a recording button and you can click it and you can record for up to 40 minutes. All right. Uh, if you have more than two people on a call, even if you're not recording, you can talk for up to 40 minutes. If it's just you and one other connection, you can actually talk as long as you want in the free tool. So Zoom makes a lot of things possible. It's a nice one. Uh, you can save it into the cloud or on your own computer if you need to edit it, all right, things like that. You'll be able to do it. Richard, let's go with another question. All right, there have been uh, a lot of variations on this question. So I'm kind of uh, homogenizing this from about four different people here. Uh, and many tweeter, tweeters, Twitter, Twitter questions along the same lines. Um, <laughs> from early elementary school grades. So here's one of them. Um, I read your blog posts regularly, appreciate the knowledge and expertise. 
You're welcome. Uh, I'm an instructional coach for K3. Our second and third graders are familiar with Google Classroom and will probably use that to distribute lessons. Our K and first students are not as familiar with it. Is there an easier platform for our K and first graders? The steps to get young children into Google Classroom seem challenging. And I would say, agreed. Uh, and so what, one of the things I've been recommending as an alternative, if you will, for the K3 crowd to Google Classroom is to try Seesaw. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I love Seesaw. Uh, I know from having talked to the founder that he really designed it for his own personal elementary school kids. Uh, when his kids were in elementary school, he wanted to get more information and wanted to make it easy. And so that's where Seesaw came from. Uh, and I've used it quite a bit with K2 students myself or with their teachers when I was coaching their teachers um, and found it to be really easy to get the whole class in. They don't need email. They don't need passwords, just a class code or scan a QR code with the iPad. And you'd be surprised, even a kindergartner can scan a QR code uh, and join the teacher's class. And that's a good way to get all the information, if you will, to the kindergartner, the first grader, and or their parents. Um, so, oh, hey, Robin, you've been following me for a long time. Thanks, Robin. Uh, <laughs> just saw the chat pop in there. Yeah, I love Seesaw for that reason. I, I think it's a fantastic resource for the K3 crowd. Um, definitely, definitely. I, I, I agree wholeheartedly. Uh, when, when I started talking with uh, Sandra Chow, a wonderfully cool lady who is the uh, innovative learning uh, lead at, uh, at Keystone Academy in Beijing, right? So, so they, they, it was early February when they, they made the switch rather suddenly. And for them too, Seesaw for the earliest grades and then they shift over, for them, Microsoft Teams because of Google and China not quite seeing eye to eye. Uh, but but without a doubt, uh, Seesaw has been useful for the young grades for them as well. Let's keep going, Richard. Well, I'll add about Seesaw because some I've also gotten a lot of variations on this question mm. um, about recording yourself over your slides, whether that's Google Slides or PowerPoint or Keynote. You pick your slide presentation tool of choice. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people asking things like, the audio, I don't want to create an audio file for each individual slide. I want to record all the slides as one lesson. And Seesaw does have that capability. Uh, one of the things I helped a second grade class do last year was do read-alongs where they propped up their iPads in front of themselves with the book and they just read along and did a little video there of the book. Now, if you want to record yourself, you can also just record on slides. Uh, Shadow Puppet, which is made by the same people that made Seesaw, will we'll do that capability. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So here we go. Uh, another question. Actual question, verbatim question. Um, I'm working on my Google Calendar. Is it possible to add an event for several years? Uh, for example, March 21st is International Day of Forests. I did not know that. Uh, how could I add it to my Google Calendar so that it comes in in 2021 in the following years? Fun little feature in Google Calendar events. You can set an event to repeat on any schedule you want, including by the year. Uh, so go into your more options in Google Calendar. You set your events to repeat on any kind of schedule you want, including by the year. It's a great little feature. That's how I remember to send flowers at certain times of the year. So. <laughs> Excellent. I, I have like all, all of my, my nieces and nephews birthdays and in, in, in the same way. And like in the description. So you know how you do a calendar event and you've got like this, uh, this piece in it where you say, okay, well, uh, you know, here's the description. You know, I'll put like the year they were born as well so that I can keep track of how old they are. Right. Uh, that's a good idea. Good idea. Um, so question came in. Maybe this is one, you're probably more familiar with it than I am uh, because I just, this is just how it is, Rustin. Sometimes, you know, we have things we're more familiar with. Uh, I teach U.S. government. As of now, schools are closed until mid-April, so we're doing online learning. I'd like to 
create an escape room online to add some excitement to my lessons. The problem is I don't know how to do it. Can you direct me to some information on software or sites that will guide me through the process? My uh, recommendation was breakout edu. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that is one where you can, you can find a lot of materials, not, not just on how to put these things together, but people will have already created these things, which, uh, which means that you're, you're, you're building something pretty cool. Uh, you, know, you, you only have to tweak it for your, your circumstances as needed. And, and that's, that's pretty sweet, right? Uh, they, they've done a good job of, of making a lot of that material available for free as well. Uh, so, so create an account over at Breakout EDU. Uh, and start exploring what's out there. You can do a search, you know, to see what's there for, for particular topics in American government. Uh, while, we're, while we're talking about American government, you know, take a look at iCivics.org as well, iCivics.org. Uh, and they, they've got a lot of good, got a lot of good material, and, and that might be useful for what you're doing. Yeah. Um, Let's do one more. Yeah. I'm sorry? Let's do one more. Let's do one more. So a uh, question from Robin about canva can i use canva.com when making banners infographics etc for online plat platforms for free yes you can uh, so full disclosure i was an early advisor to canva on some projects uh, and got to work with guy kawasaki really cool guy by the way um, so canva does have an education product that you can sign up for for free that will give you access to all their pro features for free, uh, which normally would cost you like $10 a month to get it for free. You got to use your school issued email account and verify that you're actually a teacher and not someone just trying to scam them out of $10 a month, but you can do that. Uh, and they keep adding new stuff. Canva actually has a video creation tool in there now. It's, uh, it's a little rough around the edges still, but there is a video creation tool in there. Uh, one of the things that I think is neat uh, is their slide templates, uh, because I'm a terrible graphic designer, as anyone who's taken a look at any of my designs will tell you. Uh, Canva has some great templates for presentations, but what's neat about them is you can publish them as standalone web pages that look really nice. Uh, like you can do that with Google Slides, but it's just kind of like the Google Slides editor, and it's like, eh, you know. Canva, it actually looks like a nice little web page and looks really professional. So uh, check that out. Uh, and Eric just added in that Flippity has a breakout template as well called a scavenger hunt. Nice Love Flippity. Absolutely. Love Flippity. Yeah, Flip Flippity is, is something to explore. Um, if you, you know, if you are thinking about some of these different pieces and you're like, oh my God, you're like, you know, I just, I've got more questions. Uh, well, let, let me, let me wind things down. We'll, we'll, we'll finish, uh, we'll finish the recording. And then if you are cool enough to have joined us, then we'll keep talking to you. Uh, one so, more. Oh yeah. Go ahead. Sorry, one more. Cause I missed it early on. You told me to copy it down and I did, and I just forgot about it anyway. Uh, Pat asked early on about Microsoft team or zoom. Oh uh, yeah. Microsoft team. Can you share a link? without having to have their contact info the way you can with zoom because you know in zoom you can just send a link and a person can join mm -hmm. you don't have to enter their you know i don't know is the answer to that but i do have this and i will put a link to it in um, in the chat in just a moment it's a guide from mike tolliston who's the product manager for microsoft edu uh, on using teams for remote learning so i'll put that in the chat in just a second i have it on one computer i'll put it on this computer and then i'll, I'll put it in the chat uh, he's got teams for remote learning and he's doing a free webinar on monday morning at 10 a.m i believe don't quote me on that but that'll be in the link too uh, so he's doing a webinar on how to do all that stuff so check that out uh do you know better rustin or does someone else know Rustin? no i, I don't uh, but while you're looking for that link i'll wind us down uh, so as to, to keep to the uh, the 30 minute thing or close enough uh so all of you who are, are watching this right now you know if, if you're in the chat you'll see this uh, if you are on certain kinds of devices but not all 
Uh, you can save the chat yourself right now at the bottom of the chat in the lower right. There's a little square, rounded side, corners with three dots, and you can click and save the chat. If you don't see that, you're not a bad person. It's not a reflection on your character. Um, but don't worry, because all of these links that we've added to the chat, and you're watching the recording, you're like, I don't see the chat. I feel, I feel terrible. No, 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 it's going to be okay. Uh, when I get this in our webinars page, uh, you'll be able to, and let me give you that link again, by the way. Uh, when I get this into the webinars page, uh, you'll, you'll also have a link to the links from the chat, so you'll be able to get back to this stuff. Uh, so let me wind down by saying that as, as you think about these shifts that we've been making from in-person teaching to online instruction, it's important to know that, that the, the most fundamental pieces of what we do as educators all still apply. We care for these kids, we care for their learning, and we care for ourselves in order to do the first two properly. Right, so find ways to like take a break, you know, you know like get away from your, your email for, for bits and pieces, you know, get, get some exercise, right? If you've got like the ability to just kind of quickly rock, walk around your block, that can help you. But all of this stuff really matters at this time. So, so keep, it in, keep it in mind. My little, uh, my little video library, free video library to save the world is at nextvista.org. And I have a newsletter that I send out every month. I hope you will give it a look. Uh, you can even win a, a caffeine card, a little $5 Starbucks card as a part of uh, uh, paying attention to that. And you're like, oh, no, you probably send it out to thousands of people. I do. I'd never win. Not true. Very few people actually go to the trouble. Just saying. So feel free to like check that out and see what you see. Additionally, I write a blog called Rushton H. It's at RushtonH.com. It's called Inspiring Improvement. Uh, thoughts about what we do as, as teachers, as school leaders. Uh, feel free to give that a look as well. Uh, and I've written some books. Shameless plug time. Check it out. I, I describe all kinds of ways to become better as a teacher in very short chapters in the blue book, how to work with your colleagues to make your school all the better in terms of fostering and sharing successes, ramping up learning, building confidence, those kinds of things. And that's not what I wanted. And in December, the National Catholic Education Association, kudos to those folks, uh, published Technology Teamwork and Excellence, which is for school leaders who are working to find ways to make technology improve what happens at their school. Richard. I muted myself, sorry. So uh, if you want to know more about what I do, I have freetechforteachers.com, which I update pretty much every day. Uh, I think I've missed a few days last year, but that's it. Uh, but if you want a more concise overview of what I do, you go to practicaledtech.com and click on the button for my free handbook. It's a 55 page PDF of kind of my favorite resources from the last year with links to tutorials on them and some tutorials embedded within the PDF as well. So check that out. I have a newsletter that I send out on Sunday evenings. There are about 20,000 ish people on it right now who send it out on, I send it out Sunday night. It's just my tip of the week. And then a set of links to my most popular free tech for teachers blog posts of the previous week. So you kind of get everything all in one fell swoop right there. Um, I would normally tell you where I'm going to be speaking next, but I can't. <laughs> but if you want me to do a virtual appearance at your school, I'd be, I'm happy to do that as well. You can send me an email, richard at burn.media is my email address. I think that's on the next slide. There it is. Or you can tweet at me. Uh, I've been tweeting away for 12 years at rmburn is my Twitter account. I was on, I like to say I was on there before Oprah was. You know, like, <laughs> that's what Twitter jumped the shark is when Oprah got an account. Right? <laughs> awesome. Uh, Sue in the chat said, I hope you guys will do this uh, like again. Next Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern, we're going to do it again. So please join in and please tell all your friends. You know, we would love to have as many people come in and ask that question they need as possible. We've gone over this week, and I hope you will forgive us for such a thing. However, uh, I hope that you have gotten a lot of good use out of it. And if you have any questions, get in touch with either, either of us. Right? You'll find in these slides, uh, which will also be linked on the webinars page that, uh, that I've Put down in there and I'll throw in again just because can't can't have links in there too many times, right? Uh, and beyond that, thank you guys so much for joining us. And from Calgary, way, way to go, Neil. Um, so what we want are you to send us like more things. How do we make this better? Let us know how we can improve what we do because we want this to be as useful for you as possible. I'm gonna finish up our recording. Uh, and in doing that, 
Uh, I am also kind of getting in that space of like, hey, you cool folks who joined us live, you will be able to, to keep asking some questions because that's how we roll. So thank you again for joining us and we will see you, those watching the recording, next week.